What's going on all of my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. If you work in any kind of telemetry unit, whether that be telemetry, PCU, ICU, or anything thereafter, you're going to have a patient that is going to be on a five lead EKG. Today, we're gonna to be talking about that and what that looks like. Let's get started. So to begin, let's take a look at the electrocardiogram procedure. So what is it that you will need? You will need to know your patient's information as well if there is an order for ECG monitoring. You need to have an ECG machine or a telemetry box depending on what unit you're working in. You need to have five clean undamaged leads or monitoring electrodes. And you might need to have some gloves, clippers, alcohol pads, gauze, and tape depending on what's going on with your patient. You always want to make sure that you follow facility policy once an ECG has been ordered and you need to check your patient's identification armband that they are the right patient, explain the procedure to the patient, check the electrode packaging for any kind of expiration date, plug in the ECG machine or put batteries in your telemetry box and enter the patient's information so that way you can monitor the patient. So you want to begin by preparing the skin. You really need to have a flat, non-muscular area. So if there, if there is any hair impeding you from being able to put your electrodes on a flat area, then we need to remove the hair with clippers. We never, ever, ever, ever want to shave because multiple skin abrasions can later become infected. And if the patient is on any kind of anticoagulant medication, there is an increased risk of bleeding. So hair removal with clippers is always going to be recommended in the hospital. You want to remove any sweat, dirt, lotion, or oil with alcohol wipes or soap and water. You want to dry thoroughly with gauze or rub briskly um, to abrade the skin of that fluid. And if electrodes have um, difficulty adhering to the skin, you can always use tape or some kind of skin approved adhesive to hold the electrodes on. So now let's take a look at diagnostic lead placement. So we're gonna be looking at the diagnostic five lead ECG. So it's typically used in ICU or telemetry units with continuous cardiac monitoring. Four leads are going to be attached to the torso and the fifth lead, also known as the V lead, is going to be attached to the chest. You're going to allow for monitoring of leads one, two, three, ABR, ADF, and V1 using these electrodes. Monitors um, help provide views of lateral, inferior, and anterior walls of the heart. So a quick way and an easy way to remember of where these particular leads go is clouds over grass, smoke over fire, brown is ground. So you've got, starting on your right side, you've got white, green, black, red, brown. And that's how I always remember it. Smoke over, I'm sorry, cloud over grass, smoke over fire, brown is ground. So starting with the right side, you're going, or right arm lead, you're going to place it on the right second intercostal space, mid clavicular line. For the left arm lead, you're going to place it at the left intercostal space, mid clavicular line. And for the V lead, you're gonna place it at the right of the sternum, fourth um, intercostal space. So you're just going to kind of follow, follow those leads. And as long as you've got them in the right anatomical spots, you're going to get a correct five lead ECG. So like with many things in healthcare, it's not always gonna go as we planned, right? We're going to have to troubleshoot some instruments. So if the patient has labor breathing or if there's any kind of muscle interference, you're going to have a weird ECG. So you can move the ECG cables off the patient's chest or abdomen. Um, that way there's no mechanical equipment uh, there interfering with the ECG monitoring. You can check the leads to make sure that the leads are placed appropriately. You may even need to have to address the problem, right? So if the patient is extremely anxious, you might have to calm the patient. Um, if the patient is having difficulty breathing, then absolutely we need to address that. They might need oxygen, they might need an IPPV. Worst case scenario, they might have to be ventilated depending on what's going on. Um, you can also reposition the electrodes over non-muscular areas if for some reason it um, wasn't already to reduce any kind of tremor or muscular interference from taking place with your ECG. 
Another potential troubleshooting issue could be with our larger patients or our patients that have larger breasts. So for our larger patients and those with chest wall disformities, there may um, be a challenge with trying to find the correct um, and accurate anatomical space to put the electrodes. So you have to pay extra attention, especially when it comes to making sure that these electrodes are on the correct anatomical space. And if you weren't able to do so, then you need to note any alterations in positioning when it comes to your documentation. When it comes to the breast, the breast really should be lifted and the electrodes placed on the chest wall and not on breast tissue. I have seen many times, especially precepting, um, where my orientees would place it right on the breast and you're not really getting a good conduction to that electrode. So always lift that breast up, put it underneath, connect it, put that breast back down, and there you go. If the breasts, however, are heavy, some breasts are very heavy, you may need to provide a little extra support when it comes to your V-leads, especially since that's where that one is located. So um, putting a little bit of tape, repositioning, those things can help give you a more accurate ECG monitoring. So let's talk about tape and dressing. Sometimes your patients are gonna have surgical procedures, sometimes they're gonna have wounds. There's uh, many different reasons as to why we could have ECG issues because of tape and dressing. So if an ECG is ordered on a patient with a dressing covering the area where the ECG um, probe would go, uh, then it's important that you don't um, uncover the area that's dressed unless you get permission first or try to peel it back. You don't wanna be placing electrodes underneath dressings because you don't know what's going on underneath those dressings. They could have had a surgical procedure, there could be a wound. You don't want to introduce any kind of infection. So always seek out permission before you start manipulating dressings. Always make sure that the leads are properly disinfected prior to um, removing the dressings. So that way if you do get permission, uh, there's no chance of any potential cross-contamination between the leads and either a surgical site or a wound. And lastly, let's talk about poor electrode contact. So the number one thing is if you start seeing a weird ECG on your monitor is always check the patient first. I can't tell you how many times that somebody will go in there, they'll be manipulating the lead, or leads to try to get a better ECG and the patient's blue. So always look at your patient first to make sure that they're okay before you start manipulating leads. So you need to verify if the electrodes, electrodes I'm sorry, are moist or if they have expired um, because those are absolutely going to affect the contact when it comes to your electrodes. You wanna make sure that they are securely fixed on the skin. So if the skin is wet, then you need to make sure that you dry it and clean it well uh, before you apply any kind of new electrodes. You always wanna make sure that you check the lead wires are secured and connected. Sometimes the lead wires go bad. No matter how much you try to reposition the electrodes, it's not going to make a difference. So sometimes it's not only the electrodes, it's the wires and you're gonna to have to replace those. Lastly, you might have to reposition the electrodes such as the V-lead um, if it's too close um, or too low to the chest wall. So if it's not sitting at the correct anatomical space, you're not going to get a good ECG. So you might have to move it up a little bit and that's when we talked about patients with bigger breasts or, or obese patients. You, it's gonna be hard to find those anatomical area, areas. If you have a hard time, always seek out for help when it comes to your coworkers your learning specialist or nurse educators or your management. I hope that this video was helpful in understanding the five lead ECG process. If you have any additional questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Make sure you hop over to my social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe here on YouTube and turn on that bell notification. That way you're informed every time I post a new video. At www.nursechong.com, there's additional resources when it comes to five lead ECG placement. But until next time, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye.